from somewhere in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Uh, it's just possible, man. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for joining in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Is 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. Uh, hey, Brooke, it's uh, it's me again, Brian. Uh, hi. Um, wasn't uh, sure if you got my last message or uh, any of the other ones. Um, a- anyway, I'll just leave a quick message because uh, you might be trying to call me right now, and I don't want to tie up the line. So I guess, um, uh, I guess uh, yeah, give me a call. Um, uh, okay, I'm hanging up in uh, three, two, one. Okay, call me back. I'll be here all day and tonight. Okay, bye. Uh, hey, me again. I uh, thought I might have heard a voice when I was hanging up. Nope. I uh, guess not. Okay, I will talk to you soon. Hello? Nope. Sorry. Hey, babe. Just uh, trying you again. Listening to our guy, Coltrane. <laughs> you know? it's Okay. Uh, and, anyway, I got a fax uh, earlier about cheap airfare to Cancun. Uh, I didn't know if that was you trying to reach me. Um... Uh, you know, let me give you my home number again, just in case you lost it. Voicemail uh, is full. Damn. Package for Brooke Roberts. Oh, that's me. Thanks. Uh, hey there, me again. Uh, your voicemail was full, so I got you this answering machine. So, uh, what's going on? I was thinking about, uh, doing something tonight. Uh... Hey, you're home. Listen, Brian, I want you to leave me alone, or I am calling the cops. Look, I'm so in love with you. Oh! oh. oh. It's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of like it's 101. The basics of Like Is 101 are as follows. First of all, this is not a course to teach you how to fix your marriage. How to make your boyfriend more sensitive. Okay? Save that for Dr. Turkey Neck or Dr. Phil or somebody like that. Uh, but, But forget about getting that kind of recommendation here. Because I don't claim to be an expert in that field. I'm divorced four times that I can remember. Could there be more? Who knows? Oh, I've had some years when I was so effed up, it's entirely possible. <laughs> but that's beside the point. I have learned by doing, and I'm passing my experience, my wisdom, on to you. One thing I'm not advising you on is how to save your marriage, okay? If you're a Like Is 101 student, you should not be married. You should not be getting married. You should not want to get married. And you should not be in a goddamn relationship. We are not here to help you fix those things. We believe, ultimately, there is no fix for most of them. They are doomed to fail in most cases because the institution of marriage and the tradition of relationships is fatally flawed. I say if you've got problems with your relationship, why don't you ask Dr. Laura, who's been married more than once and was uh, reportedly, according to uh, the late Bill Balance, was banging him while she was married to somebody else. Why don't you ask her for help? 
That's what Bill Balance said. I don't know if it was true. Don't know. That's what Bill claimed. And he took some naked pictures of Dr. Lord to prove it. At his apartment in Hollywood. <laughs> anyway, this classroom is not to teach you how to fix your relationship. It is not to teach you how to fix your marriage. I am here for one very specific reason. It is to help young men get laid. That is my job. One thing I know how to do is to get laid. Because when you've been married four times and divorced four times, that means you started off single. Then you got married. Then you were single again, then you're married. Then you're single again, you get married. Then the next time you get divorced, you realize it's not single, it's unmarried. Because I really don't want to be married. So then you're unmarried, and then you get married. And finally, you get unmarried, and you stay unmarried. <laughs> the point is, every time you're unmarried, you get laid a lot. Because as I have said, the way I get over a broken relationship or a broken marriage is to have sex with anything that moves. Anything with a vagina, I'm in. Well, any human over the age of 18 with a vagina, if I have to be that specific. But you know what I mean. Tall, short, fat, thin, from any country on the planet, any citizenship status, it doesn't matter. Uh, right after I break up with somebody, I get as much action as I can get. I build up my own self-esteem by tearing down the self-esteem of others. I suck the life out of women, if you will. Now, you may think that sounds cruel, or you may think I'm making a joke, but it's really not true. If you feel sad about the breakup of a relationship, there's no better way to build back up that self-esteem than by sucking self-esteem out of others and keeping it within yourself. And you do that by having meaningless sex with people and then icing them or just simply cutting them off. You're going to feel great. They're going to feel like crap. And that's not an accident. The more you chop down other people's self-esteem to bolster your own, the better you're going to feel. So it is my recommendation that uh, you go out there and have sex with anybody. Don't make any promises by the same token. You don't have to blather on about how you don't believe in relationships anymore. You don't want to be connected to anybody. You don't want to be married. You don't have to tell them that. Have sex with them, and then later on when they say, well, about marriage, when are you going to ask me to marry you? Just say, hey. I do my own thing. She will hate you. Her self esteem will be lowered a notch. Yours goes up a notch because you realize there's more where she came from, but it's probably younger and hotter. I know it's worked for me many times. Why am I so arrogant today? I'm standing on the rubble heap of the women whose self esteem I destroyed. You hear how cocky I am? <laughs> Where do you think that word came from? Bet I'm feeling cocky. <laughs> Standing on the destroyed self-esteems of so many women. Women I destroyed. And by the way, can, can I just say this? This is the sick and wonderful thing about it. Many of the women whose self-esteem I destroyed, they still call me. They would still like to get with me. In fact, the more I perverted their self-esteem, the more they call. My first wife still calls me. <laughs> it's true. I have no interest in getting with her, but I'm telling you. Women, it's sick. And women will call and say, well, that's not true, Ty, because my self-esteem is very high. Well, I'm not saying all women. Sweetheart, so don't call in. All right, don't don't call in with that. We already know. But there's an awful lot of women out there who, after you destroy their self esteem, you not only feel better, but then later on they make you feel even better by continuing to call you even after you treated them like crap. The more you treat them like crap, the more they want you. 
Now, many of you did not believe that when you first heard it. You find it out by trying it. I tell you to do it. You try it. And many of you have called and said, you know, Tom, you're right. I didn't believe you at first. But I'm treating them like crap and I can't beat them away with a stick. It's true. So I know we have many of you out there who are just out of a relationship or your girlfriend left you or she moved away to college and now she's getting banged by the entire fraternity up there and stuff. Hey, the way to get over this is to have meaningless sex with as many love-struck females as you possibly can. Then kick dirt all over them. You'll be amazed what that does for your self-esteem. It's going to bolster it immediately. After a while, you'll have so much confidence, and you'll realize how much game you're... That That is, by the way, truly game. The ability... You know, we talk about whether a guy has game. The ability to treat a woman like absolute crap and to have her, you know, panting after you like a puppy dog, that's game. You need to master that. Treat women like crap. Get them to follow you anywhere. They will. As your professor, I am here to help you avoid commitment, avoid relationships, avoid marriage. I am here to help you get what you want, which is sex, without having to waste time, money, or energy on women who aren't going to give it up. Why waste your time with women who are not going to give you what you want? I'm here to help you do that. There are many women who get very upset at your professor. They don't like what your professor has to say. Many of them say, I'm ruining it for them. I welcome your comments, ladies. The little ladies are always welcome in the Likus 101 classroom. Many of you ladies want to know how men think, and we are here to help you with that. And, man, I am here to help you have as much meaningless sex with as many of these skanks as you possibly can. And then to toss them into the human trash heap. So if you're ready to rock and roll, so am I. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Likas 101 ought to be a required course for every child entering elementary school. And then they should give it to them again in junior high. And they should give them a refresher course in high school. And if they ever make it to college, which I'm afraid most of your listeners don't, they should teach an advanced course. It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. I guess 101 with your professor. A blight on humanity, a growing cancer in our society. And available to you for not even a penny. Absolutely free of charge at 1 800 800 Tom. Dana on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? This is Great. I'm actually calling you today because um, I feel that you're kind of really ruining my relationship with my boyfriend. My boyfriend has become totally obsessed with your show. He constantly listens to it, and then he refers to it, to our relationship. And I just felt like I wanted you to know that and see what advice you would give me. How is it ruining your relationship? He, all you've told me is that he listens to the show. How bad can that be? Well, he keeps referring to how, you know, he becomes bitter against women, I think also against me in terms of marriage and all these other things, you know, that... What do you mean, what do you mean he becomes bitter about you towards marriage? I don't understand. Well, basically what it is, he'll start saying things about all, uh, all women are the same, um, and, then, and then he'll say all women are the same, and I'm never going to get married. Um, and what's, refers, what's wrong with him saying that? Well, because... I'm looking to get married at some point in my life. I'm not looking to stay single all my life. So what should I do? Stop saying that so you can get what you want? No, it's just that I guess different guys, you know, or, or a lot of guys listen to your show. And Thank that, God. Which is good. I mean, it, it affects their relationship. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping it will. I, I don't want these guys to get married to you or anybody. But why not? Because What's there's no... Marriage? It didn't work for... Other men, or maybe for there you, is no there is no people. benefit to a man to get married. There is a benefit. I what think is it? Life benefit. What is it? Well, first of all, I think there's this companion thing. Is, wait, 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 wait. Isn't your boyfriend your companion? 
Yeah, but you want more than companionship. You want it to be more of a family thing. You want to have children. I mean, that's ultimately... That's my idea. Well, there's a benefit to you. Uh, you've you've now elaborated on the benefit to yourself and the benefit to any children you might create. But what's the benefit to him? The same thing to have children. He can well. he can he can do that without being married. Uh, yes, but it doesn't look that well uh, in society. Uh, well, and, darling, that's not even true anymore. This is not the 1940s. Times have changed. I guess when your parents are conservative or both parents on both sides are conservative, that's kind of, you know, expected marriage, the institution of marriage. Yeah, but guess what? Uh, this is a new era uh, with courts telling men that they have to hand over. Uh, uh, did you see? Here's a good example. We talked about it this week. Did you see the story about Jared, the guy from the subway commercials? No, I haven't. The guy got divorced. Doesn't have any children that I can figure out. He had to give up 60% of all his profits for uh, from his corporation. 60. Not 50. 60. And he had to give up 60% of the profits from the from the book he wrote. That's really terrible. I have to tell you, I'm totally against that. But since that's the way it is, whether you're yeah. against it or not, since that's the way it is, there's no benefit to guys to get married. It's too much of a risk. So why why do the ones that do get married and some of them do live kind of happily ever after? Well, as I always say, as I say on this program, we read stories all the time of people who fell out 10-story windows and survived. Does that mean everybody should head up to the 10th floor and jump out a window? No. Right. Same thing with marriage. Just because some people remain married and remain happy, does that mean all of us should do it? No. No, but does that mean that... Everyone that gets married is doomed to... I didn't say it. everyone, but it's a majority. Okay, you're right. There's a, there's a big statistic why that it's a majority. You're right. right about that. I mean, half of all marriages end in divorce, and that doesn't count the people who stay married and are unhappy. Okay. So a majority are unhappy. Well, I want to be the majority that is happy. I know what you want. Everybody who gets married wants to be happy. But more than half end up not being happy. Okay. That's why there's no benefit to a man to get married. So what do you think I should do? What do you think? My boyfriend is just being very bitter lately, and it's been going on for a while. And, you know... Well, you, you call it bitter. I mean, he agrees with me that marriage is not a benefit to him. But that means... That, that doesn't make him bitter. I that just means he's me. being realistic. Okay, well, what does that mean? Does it mean I should continue in this relationship or I should part ways? Well, Donnie, if you, have a, if you have a biological time clock ticking, I see here you're 37 years old and you're all worried about how old you are and you want to have children, you might have to move on to somebody else. Or you might have to accept the idea that having children with him will mean not being married to him. Okay. But what chances does it mean if I move on to somebody else that that person's going to want to get married? Well, you know, fortunately, to your show. fortunately for you, I, I wish it were different. Fortunately for you, every man doesn't listen to this show. You might meet a man who listens to uh, Coast 103.5 and he likes love songs, or you might meet a guy. Oh, California listens to your show. Be honest, they all do. Everyone. All right. yeah. Yeah. From your Warner, mouth to God's ears. Huh? Everyone listens to your show in California. Oh, let's keep that going. So are you not from here? I am living here from up in the East Coast. Figured as much. Excuse me? No, never mind. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, bottom line here, dear, is uh, he's not bitter. He's just being honest, and he agrees with me, and I'm not bitter. Okay, so what's, what's wrong with me being honest, too? Go ahead and be honest. Okay. I'm waiting. Well, I, I was I told you what I want eventually, but I'm, right. not, I'm not asking for anything. Well, if to, anything my recommendation to you would be if time is of the essence, you probably have to go out and find somebody else. Somebody who does, maybe you have to go to another state and find somebody who doesn't listen to the show. I should tell you we're on in Las Vegas, we're on in Dallas, we're on in Portland, Oregon, we're on in Seattle. You might have to fly to like Denver. Or might even have to go back to the East Coast when they don't really listen to you out there. And even then, uh, there are people who hear us on the Internet uh, in every country on the planet. Okay. No, I understand. 
Okay. So, um, you know, I just I just wanted to, you know, say hello, actually. I, I've listened to your show, and I do have to say I do agree with a lot of things you say. Um, some things I don't. That's my personal Do opinion, I sound but... like a bitter person to you? I'm sorry, excuse me? I said, do I sound like a bitter person? Um, I just, I, some things about women, I guess I don't like that you say you put women down. That doesn't make me bitter. No, but you, I think, you impose your personal life on these men. I can't impose my personal life on anybody. I'm sitting in a studio in a Hollywood film lot. I know that, but you how can I? How can I impose anything? If no, no, Donna, you don't know the you don't know the definition of the word impose. You know, uh, certain countries impose martial law. Okay, I can't impose anything on anyone. I'm doing a radio show, and I give my opinion. That's all I do. I don't impose anything on anyone. But these guys out there are actually, like, living through your eyes. That's great. I'm thrilled to hear it. Okay, no, I know you I know you want that, and, and, and I've heard your show. That's and, my job. And my job is to get I people to want to listen that. to what I, I have to that. say. That's my what? gig. My okay. job is to get people to want to listen. Okay. Right? No, definitely. I, I, think, it's, I think it's a great show that you're doing this, but I just think for women that want to have an honest, true relationship, it affects their relationship if a guy continuously listens to this, and it's kind of a type of um, influence. That's well, you know what I have said to women? Well, Forget about men listening to my show. I am the show. And when women get all upset about me not wanting to get married or not wanting to have kids, here's what I say. Why do you want to ruin a good thing? Are we having a good time? Are we having fun? Why are you hell-bent on ruining it? Well, marriage shouldn't ruin it. But you're happy now. Yeah, but the whole idea of marriage is to constitute it, make it more um, solid, I guess. That's yeah, but it doesn't, it. because you could just walk out and get divorced. Of course, but there's kind of, you know... And not just an expectation. Maybe it's kind of girls' dreams to get married. Well, that's that again. It's a girl's dream to get married, not a guy's dream. Some guys do. Some yeah, guys gay men, uh, you know, wedding designers and thing, wedding planners, and yeah, those men. But guys don't grow up saying, "Ooh, I'm going to wear a tuxedo and we're going to get a wedding cake." I can't wait till I'm an adult. <laughs> girls' dream, but guys dream about cars. Girls dream about getting married. Girls read about Prince Charming, Beauty and the Beast. Guys don't read that stuff. But I've been down that road before. I've been married when I was much younger. How'd that work out for you? And it, back then it didn't work now. Had I known then what I know now, probably it would have. But now I'm a little Well, maybe older. not. Maybe you didn't know anything then and you don't know anything now. Oh, I do know a lot now, and I know what I want. Yeah, no, what, you wanted it then, too. No, I, I, I think it was more a, a bit of a pressure situation. I was 24 years old, and it lasted for a year and a half. And Why did you feel pressure? My family. I ah, felt pressured. I see. And now are they pressuring you? No, they're, they're, they're the best. They actually don't pressure me. I think I myself feel a bit of pressure in my life because I feel that... That's something that I want eventually, not now, maybe two years down the line, but eventually I want to know that I'm not walking down a dead, you know, a dead end street. It's not a dead end street. You got a relationship. You're happy. He's happy. We're working on the relationship. We've had problems. If you have problems, why would well, getting married going to fix them? No, I don't think so. So you really haven't learned all that much if you believe that. I think getting married down the the road is what I would like with this person. But, but it's not going to fix anything if you're having problems in the relationship. No, no, I know it's not going to fix anything. I have to fix those problems. And what are the now. problems exactly? Well, um, I cheated on him. Oh, really? Yeah. So why would he want to marry you? Well, he's given me a chance, according to him. He's yeah, but he's also me. not married to you. Well, why not? I mean, I've, I'm really... You cheated on him. What I did. 
I don't care if you're really sorry for what you did. You did it. Uh, and you believe being sorry for what you did excuses it. No, I believe it's, it's going to be a hard, uh, a hard uh, mountain to climb. Oh. Oh, I would. I wouldn't marry you. I t I've been married four times. I wouldn't marry you if you cheated on me. No way. So then, why should I even ask the last person who cheated on me? She knows who she is. And this was you know, a few years ago. Now, ask the last person who cheated on me. She has not seen me since. She sends me emails and she sends me text messages and she sends me instant messages. She knows who she is too. And she keeps trying to meet me or see me or hook up. Never happens. Okay, so then why is he then forgiving me and why are we working on this? Well, thing? he's forgiven you to a point, but he won't marry you. And I should leave. I should, tonight I should tell him it's over. Well, you could do that. So I'll tell you what, if you cheated on me, not in a million years, not in a million years would I marry you. But it's okay if you were to cheat on her, right? It no, I never said that was okay. But let's just say it was the other way. And by the way, you know, this is not about me. It's about you. You're a cheater. I know, but you don't know why it, why it happened. Well, uh, tell us. All right, let, fine. Like I'm I'm listening. Why did it happen? I was having, you know, a problem in my life. I wasn't sure exactly where I was going. It's something that happened to me. That doesn't really excuse want. cheating. I think it was more of a sexual thing, to be honest. Well, that's what it usually is. It's usually a sexual thing. It doesn't ex uh, but that doesn't excuse it. I know it doesn't excuse it. Well, you're, you're making it sound like there's extenuating circumstances. Hey, wait a minute. There's extenuating circumstances. It was a sexual thing. Uh, that's going to be my excuse next time I cheat. Hey, there were extenuating circumstances. I wanted to cheat. I didn't want to cheat. I did not. I, it was sexual. Doing that. Yeah, well, it was sexual, wasn't it? That's what you just said. That was your extenuating circumstance. It was sexual. But I'm very sorry about it. B yeah. Boo freaking who? No, every day. Every day I feel terrible about it. Sure you do. I really, really do. Yeah. Why'd you do it if you feel so terrible? I, I, I words cannot explain. It's hard for me to put it in words. Because you know why? Because you just felt like doing it, and that's it. The real truth sounds horrible, and you can't say it. You found somebody you thought was hot, and you wanted to hop into the sack with them. That's why you did it. Yeah, you wanted to do it. Then he stalked me for for a very long time. Then you got what you deserved. Here. You got what you deserved. Okay, you're right. I did. And I probably deserve even more for what for what happened. Mm -hmm. You get now you're getting it because now your boyfriend tunes in here and here's me talking about the sluts and the whores and the women who cheat on guys and stuff. And he's with, he realized he's with one of those women. No, I don't consider myself one of those women. Well, I know you don't, but come on, only a slut would have a boyfriend and then go out and have sex with somebody else. That's the definition of a slut. Okay, you can say whatever you want to say. That's what it is. If you're not a slut, who is? If you're not a slut, who is? The people that do it all the time. Maybe, oh, I see. Me. So just having sex with somebody outside your relationship a few times, and it was a few times, it wasn't just once. Was it a few times or was it many times? It was a few times. Probably many times. Uh, that would not make you a slut. You would have to. What would be the minimum number of other people you would have to sleep with before you would be a slut? No number. They can't really say the number. But I personally think highly of myself, and I don't consider myself a slut. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you think you deserve to do that. You just said it was a sexual thing. Yeah, because it was something that happened. No, 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 no. Tsunami. No, 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 no. Tsunamis happen. Okay. Brain tumors happen. Okay. Uh, having sex with somebody else that doesn't happen to you. You make it happen. Do you see the difference? Yes. All right. Earthquakes happen. Screwing somebody else, that doesn't happen to you. You go out and make it happen like the whore that you are. Do you understand the difference? No, I, I see what you're trying to You say. try to make it sound like a tsunami. Oh, you were just out there on the beach one day in Singapore, and suddenly the, the wave came right over you, washed over you, and there was nothing you could do about it. You're no victim. You're the perpetrator. I kind of became a victim afterwards. No, no, no. Afterwards, we're not ta we're not talking about whether the guy was a stalker. We're talking about you riding him like a pony. 
You made that happen. You did. Okay, but it's it's all over and done with. There's no, no well, it's, no, the, 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 the humping is over, but the effects of the humping are not. You want them to go away. You're one of these people. I, I remember this uh, this uh, lying, thieving radio executive I once worked for. And uh, later on when I had a syndicated show, he wanted to run my show on his station. And I said, I want nothing to do with you. And he says, well, I just want to move forward. You're one of those move forward people. Yes, I know I was dishonest and I carved your heart out at one time in the past. But now I just want to move on. Well, I don't want to move on that quickly. Yeah, that well, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You want to move on. Every day I get reminded. From you should be. Every other day about you deserve it. Why did you do this? Or why did you do you that? deserve it. You head. deserve it. Okay, I deserve it, and I understand, but until when do I deserve it? For the rest of my life? Maybe. Don't like it? Get out. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not looking to get out anytime soon unless no. he wants to get out. Yeah, well, he's got to keep reminding you. He's probably listening to us right now. Yeah, and if he is, that's fine. But what I wanted to know is like, okay, fine. He'll remind me and remind me. How is that going to make the relationship better? He's not trying to make the relationship better, and neither am I. So why is he wasting his time, wasting my time? I think maybe you're a nice piece of ass. I don't know. Well, I don't want to be anybody's nice piece of ass. Well, you that's were for the stalker. Weren't you? I guess I was. I, I, right. So maybe you're just good in the sack. Well, I'm not a whore or some... Oh, yeah, you, know, you are. Hang on. Let's see what someone else thinks. Ruby, what do you want to say to Dana? I, you know, I want to say that you are a slut for doing that because if you were you wouldn't have done that to him. And I agree with Tom. A lot of the times I don't agree with him, but this time I'm kind of 100%. So, yes, okay. you are a whore. You have never been in that situation, and I guess... Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And you know what? I turn my back on it. It's there. There's temptation is every day, everywhere, wherever you go. But but you have control over your actions. So, yes, you, you created that. And if it happened once, and if you were drunk or whatever, that's different. But you did it many times. So, knowingly, you knew what you were doing. You knew. That, that, that That's dirty. You didn't love your boyfriend. He should walk away from you. He deserves what? somebody better than you. Well, you know what? I really do love my boyfriend. Okay. I, I, doesn't matter what you think. You know, that's your opinion, and I respect it, but I really do. You Okay, you don't do that to somebody you love. That's not... That's, you're supposed to respect that person. And... Go ahead. I, I was cheated on, and you know what? I walked away from him. So, and, what and you know what? what? And you know what, Tom? He's actually one of your listeners, it. and I'm sure he's listening to you now. Okay, I'm sure he is. But what about those people that worked through it? Maybe, obviously, you weren't one of those people that worked through it. But there are the people, the whatever percentage of, of them there are, that actually work through that and overcome that, and it doesn't happen again. I would never... I think they're anybody. fools, frankly. Anybody who treats me with that little respect, out. So you actually, both of you have no faith in uh, situations like this that could be overcome. Yeah, yeah. Have. You know, it's like it's like those uh, born again virgins. You know, you're gonna be a reborn slut. So what are you gonna be here? Well, I don't consider, done. I don't consider that to be an example, but that's besides the point. Oh, I see. So it was perfectly okay. You're allowed to do that a few times. I'm not allowed to do that a few times. It's something that happened in my life. That I no, no, it's not something that happened in your life. It's something that you instigated. It's something you did. It isn't something that happened to you. It's so something no you point did. Point but, you know, you can't even take responsibility in the way you I explain it. Responsibility, but listen to this. Take There's responsibility. It Say it to me right now. You instigated it. It happened because you wanted it to happen and you made it happen, Right. I didn't really want it to happen. I was confused about the whole so thing. So you were a rape victim? I wasn't a rape victim. So how did it happen? It's it's a long story. It was kind of both sided. You're right, about two people meeting each other and then You but you you who took your patties off? Not, I'm not I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> you don't that come put Turns it on and turns it off all the time to piss me off. There we go. Well, you started it. 
And so now? It's not going to make the relationship better. It's a joke. Well, why don't you just leave? Because I love him. Oh. I, I, I believe he really loves me, too. Gag. Uh, I'm sticking my finger down my throat. Well, I... Just because you don't think to have faith in relationship doesn't mean that... Boy, you are... And by the way, women like you are the reason. No wonder you're upset that he listens. Well, because I'm trying to make my relationship... And he can listen, that's fine, but I don't want that listening imposed on me. I already told him, when you want to talk about Tom Likas show, you talk to your friends, you talk to your relatives, don't talk to me about it because it really bothers me. Because well, he's got to keep doing it. He's got to keep doing it because we have a very powerful message. A message that's reaching him. It's he's reaching your boyfriend and it's going to affect your relationship because if I have anything to say about it, he will never, ever marry you. Tom like his show. Jessica, hello. Jessica. Hi, Tom. You busy over there? No, I, the radio was on. I could hear the music still, so I didn't hear you. Sorry. Didn't Dean tell you to turn the radio off? No, on the on the phone. Like the, you had the music going on the phone, so that's what I heard. Sorry. Oh. How are you? Doing great. Good, good. Um, I guess I'm calling. I've never heard your show ever in my life, but I was sitting in my boyfriend's work car, and I was listening to you talk about how to have sex with as many girls as possible and and to, um, to ruin their self-esteem to bring you up. I think that's really ridiculous and sad. Why? How by ruining somebody else's self-esteem? is It works. Really? So making somebody else feel like poop works? Making yes. people better? Yes. Well, how old are you, Tom? Why does that have anything to do with it? Because, like, you're telling all these boys who are, like, 20 to 25 hurt people, hurt their feelings. and It you're works. Great. It works. That's, just, that's not the point. Ah, so, so you admit uh, it, it possibly does work, right? I don't know. I'm not a. I'm not a guy. Well, I'm, I'm telling a, you yeah. that any guy who's ever gone through a breakup or gone through a divorce, who's done what I suggest, uh, has been a lot happier after doing it. It helps us get over a bad relationship. I don't. I don't know, Tom. I just think that's horrible. Well, maybe so, horrible, but it's but it works. <laughs> so, just, I I don't get it. I don't understand why would you want to? Why can't you just? Meet a good girl, date her, and because there just aren't that many good girls out there in this country. So, so the best, the next best thing to do is to tear down somebody else's self esteem and then build up your own in the process. So, hey, you and your so, filthy so, mouth. Sorry. Oh. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom dot com. Filthy, filthy mouth. The Tom Likey Show. Southern California's FM Top Station.